Hello, hello guys. Uh, good evening, good evening. Hello, oh, Giga is here, Name is here. Hello, uh, oh, Gil. Hello, welcome. Thank you for the for the retweet. Uh, how good is this uh, uh, introduction from Garo Mark of the Wolves? I, I love it, really. Okay, so we can um, we can I can unmute Giga and. Uh, so you can you can hear his voice uh, via Discord. Okay, Giga, you there? He muted himself. No. Okay, Giga, now he should be able to listen to me. So guys, welcome to this uh, seventh episode of um, the Italian Dojo, um, starring Tizoc the Griffin. Giga, welcome. Giga hello, Sensei everyone. is here. There you are. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. Fine. Okay. So we are ready for uh, for Tizok tonight. Um, just before getting started, um, Giga, how long have you been playing Garo Mark of the Woods? I started playing this game with the Steam version after the rollback netcode update came out. So that would have been like January of last year, uh, 2020. Nice. So you, you already knew the game and didn't want to play it because of the netcode? I mean, uh, online. I, that, that's when I started playing online. I played the game a little bit, like just casually uh, with an emulator like playing against the CPU. And that's where I learned the basics of the game. The, I didn't start uh, playing online until after the netcode update on Steam. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Nice. And uh, so was your main uh, uh, TZOC since from day, day one? Or uh, did, you, did you change your main? Uh, you started with another character and then you changed to TZOC? Uh, so when I first started, I, I was messing around with various characters, but I was leaning towards uh, Rock and Tzok. Okay. Uh, but I had more, like Tzok more, I had more success with him, so I decided to, to go with him in the end. Okay, I see. Nice. Okay, so we can we can start. And um, so uh, this time, instead of... Uh, Restreaming from Discord, we can um, I can cha I can uh, challenge you, or you can challenge me. No, I can challenge you. I am offline actually. Uh, let me put online. Okay, you can challenge me on Fight K. Then we can use the AES version of uh, of the of the game. So you can uh, you can go in the training mode, and we can start. And have a look at uh, these ups. The challenger. A challenger. Nice. Is my volume low? Chat says voice might be. Um, yeah, the voice should be should be okay. Now, should be. Um, wait. Why did? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You have to restart. So I'll just head into training mode first. Yeah, yeah, you can go in practice and I, I can I can just watch. Oh, wait, there's a problem in video. Okay, nice. Okay, nice. So first thing first is um, uh, Tzox neutral game. So, let's have a look at neutral attacks. Uh, actually, I want to talk about yeah. a couple of things first. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, so, today I'm obviously going to be talking about Tzox. He's known as the Griffin or Griffin Mask in Japan. Okay. And he's a professional wrestler and is this game's only uh, true grappler, I would say. 
Okay. So he's a he's a grappler archetype, uh, and has uh, various command grabs, although not all of them are very useful. Okay, nice. And uh, a character overview for him. I'm just going to go over some of his pros and cons, some of his uh, strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. So some of his pros are he has range and damage on his normals. Okay. He has a good neutral and air-to-air -air game. It's higher defense and a higher guard crush bar than average. He has a command grab super, which is an unblockable super since command grabs are obviously unblockable. Okay. He has a useful feint uh, with uh, special properties that has upper body invincibility. Oh, nice. And some of his cons, uh, he struggles to build meter. His break moves aren't too useful. Uh, he has a, a lack of a good invincible reversal, uh, aside from his uh, command grab super, which requires meter, only okay. works on grounded opponents. He has uh, limited combos that are mainly reliant on him having uh, P power, which is full bars of meter. Okay. And his uh, punish game is hurt by something called the throw bug, which makes his command grabs unreliable for punishing. Hmm. Okay. And basically his overall game plan is... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, his normals have good range and damage. Uh, the only downside is that they're a bit slower than average compared to other characters. So generally, you want to maintain a sort of um, mid-range uh, footsie distance. As you can see, I'm moving around in this range. Okay. This is the type of range you want to uh, maintain as Tizok, uh, where you're able to uh, poke and pressure them with uh, your normals but you remain out of the range of their normals. Okay. Um, at mid-range, you can also better react to the opponent's uh, jump-ins with air-to-airs. So in this sort of range, if you see them jump in, you can react with air-to-airs. Um, so he can play a sort of keep-out game against the opponent. Uh, to condition the opponent to block more uh, with your normals and your, and your pokes, Mm -hmm. so that's when you want to get in close for a command grab. Uh, however, you typically don't want to remain in close range to the opponent for too long. Since, as I mentioned before, his normals are generally slower than average. He lacks a good invincible reversal dealing uh, with pressure up close. So you don't want to remain in this range too long. Only You only want to get in close for a command grab then you generally want to play this mid-range. Okay. Right here. Nice. Um, and let's the uh, range, briefly uh, talk about... The range is, uh, compared to other characters, is a bit uh, shorter. For example, um, last time I, I was talking, we, we were talking with um, Kota, and uh, with Freeman, um, the range was uh, like uh, farther from, uh, from this one. It was uh, similar to the to the starting position of the of the two of, of the two <laughs> players, but I see that with Tizok you you usually stay closer than the average uh, uh, character. Uh, yeah, so you can get in for a command grab, no. but again, you okay. don't want to be you don't want to stay too close. You want to be at this good like mid range distance where you can poke. Yeah. Like, for, for instance, Terry's 5A couldn't reach me here, but I can poke him with my 5A. Oh, so okay. you want to maintain this sort of distance for a I command see. grab. Yeah, okay, okay, nice. So that's his general game plan. And I, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, beginner mistakes. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the most common uh, mistake that I see beginners make uh, with the character it's that they tend to overuse his special moves and they underuse his normals. Okay. Uh, as I said before, his normals are very good. A lot of his specials aren't that great. Uh, what I see beginners do a lot is they th like to throw these moves out in neutral. Yeah. 
You'll see them do this a lot in neutral, and those moves are all pretty unsafe and pretty risky to throw out in neutral. Uh, one of Tzok's strengths is his neutral game, so you don't want to be throwing risky moves like those a lot in neutral. Instead, you want to make sure you play a solid neutral game uh, using his normals. Okay. Um, so yeah, that being said, uh, talking about his normals, let's let's get into it and yeah, yeah start talking about his normals and neutral game. Putin, welcome. Putin hey, hey. says that Griffon has uh, a quite long range, actually. His normals have very good range. Yeah. So let's just start with his uh, standing normals. Yeah. This is 5A. Jab, it's it has four frames of startup. Okay. Uh, the far version is a plus three on block. And oh. in this game, most moves do the same block stun and hit stun, aside from like evasion attacks like 5AB and 2AB, and maybe some specials. But for the most part, I say something is like a plus one on block. It also implies that it's uh, plus one on hit. Okay. So, yeah, far version is plus one on hit. Close version is plus a three on block. Okay. And this is one of the main pokes. Uh, you want to use as Tzok, of course, it's safe on block. It's his uh, fastest normal, along with uh, 2A. Uh, good range, so you... This is one of the main pokes uh, you want to use as in. Um, it's 5B. Seven frames of startup and is zero on block, so it's still safe. Um, it's slower than his 5A. It has very good range, even more range than his 5A. As you can see here, my 5A whiffs. Yeah. My 5B is able to connect. And look at this range. Yeah, how far I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another poke you really want to utilize. I see. Uh, next up. Right. And then he does have a close version. It looks the same. Okay. It's, uh, hitbox is slightly different and it does less damage it does six damage as you can see here but the far version does seven damage typically you don't want to use the close range version um in this range you want to either use 5a or 2a instead you only want to use 5b at when you're out of your 5a or 2a range hey, hey. okay um so next we have his 5c also known as the chop. Um, so this move is uh, 14 frames on startup, and it's actually safe on block. So it's uh, plus one. Hmm. Um, it has more range than its uh, 5A and 2A. Oh, okay. Less range than its less range than its 5B. Uh, so you can sort of use this as like a slow uh, poke. Okay. Uh, but again, it's it's pretty slow. It works well as a meaty, uh, so it sort of offsets some of like the long startup. Okay. Um, you can also uh, cancel it only on block. So on hit, you can't cancel it, but on block, you can. Okay. Um, and you can also use this move to sort of control this space in front of you. Uh, mm -hmm. As you can see when I throw this move out, uh, the space directly in front of him, if like the opponent tries to maybe dash in or hop in, in this space right in front of you, you can sort of preemptively throw it out. Because again, it is safe on block. Uh, there is no close version, so it's just, it's the ah, okay. same. It's the same. Then his 5D, uh, this is the far version. Okay. It's, uh, has 12 uh, frames of startup and is, uh, let me check the frame data for a sec. Yeah. Hello, Girolamo, welcome. Good evening. It's, it's minus nine on block. So 12 okay. frames of startup, oh, wow. minus nine on minus block. Nine. 
pretty unsafe. Yeah. Generally, don't want to use this move. Okay. It's, it's not good. It's slow and it's unsafe. Yeah. Um, this version, however, is uh, pretty useful. It's six frames of startup, so it's much faster, and it's a for one block. This is a good uh, post normal to use. And it also makes for a good meaty. Okay. Um, so those are his standing normals. Okay. Next, uh, let's talk about his crouching normals. A two way. Again, it, it functions uh, similarly to his five A, uh, except he's crouching, so his hurt box is lower, mm -hmm. and it has a tiny bit uh, more range than his five A. <laughs> So again, it's same startup, four frames. Um, this one is zero on block. Um, yeah, so it's one of the pokes you want to use as well. 5A, 2A, 5B. Those are the pokes you want to use as Tzok. Okay. Um, 2B, uh, same startup as his 5B. Uh, so seven frames and it's plus two on block. It has less range than his five B though. Uh, its range is about the same as his as his two A. Mm -hmm. So it's it's fairly it's fairly slow, but its range its range is okay. It's, pl it's plus two on block, so you get some frame advantage. And of course, it does hit low, so let's have that going for it. Okay. Next is his oh. uh, 2C. The entire air. <laughs> so it's 11 frames uh, of startup and minus 5 on block. Uh, and as you said, it can be used as an anti air. However, it is a bit slow since it's 11 frames. Okay. Um, yeah. As you can see, when I do this move, he sort of extends his arm out at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Typically, you want to use it at a farther range when the opponent jumps in at you at this uh, 45 degree angle. If they try jumping in close, it's possible for this move to whiff and for them to just jump above your head. Oh, okay. You want to make sure you space out this um, anti-air properly. Usually when they're, again, jumping in from farther range. And you can also use this move, like his 5C, to control the space in front of you. So if the opponent tries to um, run or dash up and do a hop, you can this move out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And his 2D, which is a sweep. This move has 12 frames of startup and is minus 10 on block. So again, a uh, pretty slow and unsafe on block. So you don't want to be throwing this move out a lot. Um, it's true for most characters, actually. Their sweeps are generally a bit slow and unsafe on block. So you don't want to use them that much. Yeah. One thing is that if he does hit Mac, like at this range, you can see the move knocks down you hit in your max range, it actually won't knock down. Ah, okay. You're actually unsafe on hit, which is bad. So yeah, that's a, that's another reason why you don't want to use this move too much. Okay. If you want to go for a low, just a 2B is the safe option. It already has decent range. <laughs> yeah. Then... Yeah, so let's talk about his uh, jump normals. His jump A has uh, seven frames of startup. So it's his fastest jump normal. This move is a good air to air. Okay. You can see his arm extends from his upper torso. So it's good for hitting the opponent who's, who might be uh, jumping in from above you. Okay. Quick air to air would be to like just neutral jump or neutral hop. 
Also, jump back. A. Um, is jump B is has nine frames of startup. This uh, move isn't useful. You probably won't use it too much, and that's because it's jump D is better to use in most cases, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Yep. Yeah, this move isn't um, useful. Its its range is sim is about the same as his jump D. From what I've tested, they have around the same horizontal range. I think its hitbox might extend a little below jump D's. It has less pushback. Um, so that's uh, when you might want to use it over jump D. It also can combo into one of his uh, special moves, his air grab, Icarus yeah. Crash. That's that's another instance you might want to use this over jump D, but otherwise jump D is typically the better jump normal to use. Um, jump C is 11 frames of startup. This is typically the move you want to use when um, for jumping. Okay. Um, top C is very good. There's jump C. The hitbox for this move extends uh, below his upper torso, so below his like elbow. So you generally want to be above the opponent. Okay. This move. It's better for uh, cl uh, closer jumpings. Um, and speaking of that, his jump D. This move has uh, eight frames of startup, so it's actually faster than his. B, his jumpy is nine frames. Yeah. B, eight frames. It also has a uh, more active frame. So, again, that's why jump B is generally better to use. And of course, it does more damage too. It does uh, 10 points of damage. B only does uh, six points of damage. So this is the move uh, you want to use uh, over jump B. Uh, it's better as. Uh, long range jump in, whereas jump C is better closer range where you want to be like above the opponent. A jump D, the hitbox extends like where his hooks are, so to the side. Okay. Whereas a longer range jump in, so it's the hop is very good as the jump. This is also your, the main normal you want to use as in air to air. Uh, specifically, neutral jump D and back jump D, uh, very good at stopping the opponent's advances in the air. Yeah. So again, when you're playing this sort of mid-range game uh, with Pizok and you see the opponent try to jump at you, back D, neutral jump D, stops their advances in the air. Um, so yeah, easily one of his normals in my opinion. Uh, okay. Really, uh, really good in the neutral game. It lets him control um, the neutral game. Um, okay. So yeah, I think those are all his, uh, all of his normals. Yeah, we just uh, have to talk about A B to uh, five A B two A B and uh, top move. Yeah. So his evasion attacks. Yeah. Uh, AB, this is his low evasion attack. It's called low evasion attack because it avoids lows. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty slow. Uh, let me check the frame data. Uh, it's 22 frames of startup. Uh, it's plus one on hit, plus seven on block. Okay. This isn't a move you want to... Um, and it does hit overhead, but it isn't a move you want to throw out too much. It can work as a meaty, and you can actually... Yeah. A land a counter hit with this. Uh, just set that up. So you can like link a 5C off of a counter hit. If you go for this move meaty and the opponent tries to wake up with something. But otherwise, uh, this isn't a move you want to use too much. If you want a fast overhead, just go for a hop. Oh, okay. His 2AB, on the other hand, it has uh, 15 frames of startup and is plus one on both 
uh, hit and block. This is his upper evasion attack. It avoids higher hitting moves. Um, it's not that good as an anti-air. It's good against uh, normal, so if the opponent tries to look at me with their 5A, for instance, yeah. and do this move, I can also mix it in with my own pokes. I can poke them with my 5A mi oh, okay. uh, and mix it in with this. Um, it also hits twice, which is good because oh. it can sometimes uh, eat their a guard cancel attempt. The second hit might hit them out of their guard cancel. And of course, it also moves them forward. So again, it makes it a uh, good move to mix in with his pokes since it moves him forward and he can remain in this sort of uh, poking and footsie range. Okay. And uh, let's talk about his throws. I'll uh, talk about his top attack when I get to his uh, specials. Okay, okay, nice. Okay, so uh, Tizok has different throws. He's the only character with two throws aside from Gato. Yeah. So he has both the C throw and the D throw. Uh, his first throw, his C throw, is called Griffin Tower. This is what it looks like. Okay. Actually has a follow-up called Griff Fall. Um, and it's performed using, well, his C throw is just forward and C or back and C. A follow up, you want to tap 3 3 C, or you can actually tap 1 1 C. Okay. Most command lists only list uh, 3 3 C, but you can actually use 1 1 C as well. The timing is a bit different. Um, for the 1 1 C, you want to do it a bit later. You can just mash it out. So you can do that and just mash follow up out. Huh. That's what it looks like. Uh, so the total damage uh, would be uh, 24 points. Okay. Uh, looking at the correct damage value. Yeah. His D throw is called a uh, Griffin hug. Okay. Forward and D and back and D. It looks like move doesn't have a follow-up it's of damage so it does two points less than his C throw with the follow-up uh, but typically you want to use D throw like most of the time I'd say like 95 to 99 percent of the time you want to use his D throw there are basically um, three reasons for that I would say okay um, first reason uh, for positional advantage, as you can see, if I'm like mid screen right here, mm -hmm. right in the middle of, of the stage, and I go for the D throw, does ah, yeah. the opponent end up corner? So, this one's better for positional advantage. Um, second reason is the frame advantage after the, the knockdown. You can't tech roll throws, so it's better for uh, setting up Okazemi. If I'm already near the corner here and I throw the opponent, go for Okazemi. Okay. It has more, um, I guess you could call it frame advantage after the throw than the C throw. The third reason is because in case the throw uh, whiffs, so to speak, um, in this game there's no uh, throw whiff animation. Instead, you'll just get the normal. In case the uh, the throw whiffs, you will get either Osti or Fardy, and this works better than oh, if, if I go for a C throw and the throw whiffs, I'll get a 5C, okay. which is pretty slow. A close D is much faster, and Fardy can also kind of work as an anti-air of sorts if the opponent tries jumping out. Might get hit by the Fardy. So that's why you generally want to go for the B throw. Okay. Um, C throw you only want to go for if you need that two points of extra damage to kill. Okay. Otherwise, stick with his D throw. Okay. Uh, just one uh, small thing. Uh, Okizeme, Okizimi, you, you said that. Uh, that's the Japanese word for um, pressure on wake up, is it correct? 
Yeah. Okay. Basically, so um, it's after the knockdown, and then you can go for a yeah. attack or some sort of uh, mix-up on the opponent's wake-up. Okay. Again, after a throw, the opponent can't tech roll. Yeah. So they're basically um, forced to, uh, you know, take take the or play the mix up. Yeah. Take the mix up or whatever. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, fine. And okay, let's talk about his specials now. Yep. The first special I want to talk about is his main command grab, uh, this Hurricane. Okay. Formed with a 360 motion in either A or C. Just like that. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. This is the A version. Again. Okay. 26 points of damage. This is the C version. Again. Okay. 32 points of damage. Uh, they both they both have the same startup, so three frames of startup. Uh, the C version obviously does uh, more damage. It does six points of more damage. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Uh, there is a reason to use the A version. Um, so I'm asking you this. Uh, do you know what the difference is between the two versions aside from, aside from the damage? Two differences aside okay. from the damage. No. Nope. Um, okay. So the two main differences are range of the A version has well, it has slightly more range. Oh, okay. The C version. That's one advantage to using the A version if you need that uh, bit of extra range. The other difference is again you'll probably notice it again. okay so these will be again. Oh, okay so you, you, you notice farther from your opponent on with the c1 yeah hey, hey. yeah farther from the opponent like nearly full screen so a version is better for okazemi okay again. actually in the corner yeah a version is the one you want to go for in the corner because how close I am and I can continue to pressure the opponent here whereas the C version okay the way back here I'll talk a bit about his um, Okazemi later as well as some of his uh, command grab setups but first I want to through the rest of his specials. Yeah, uh, just one thing. How do you perform a 360? Maybe it's uh, worth to to say how to perform a, a 360 move without jumping. Without jumping, yep. uh, the motion I like. Right, so, um, an important thing to know about 360s is that you only need to hit the cardinal directions. So that's like forward, down, back, and up. You don't need the diagonals. So okay. that's something to keep in mind. Okay. Uh, that's true in most fighting games. Oh. And um, uh, so perform like a standing or walking 360. Uh, the motion I like to use is I start by holding forward, so yeah. six, and then I go three, two, one. Yeah. Four, seven, eight. Okay. So it just takes a bit of practice if you're not used to it. Uh, but you just want to do the. Make sure you hit all the cardinal directions. Yep. Make sure you do it fast enough. Uh, Tzok has um, three pre-jump frames, so that's three frames of jump startup. So you have uh, you have uh, three frames after inputting the eight or one of the up diagonals to yep. hit A or C. Yeah. Okay. Another important thing to know about his 360 is that you do have to, if you start with six and then you go two, four, you do have to hit eight. Uh, rock can end on an up diagonal. 
So if he like starts with six and he goes three, two, one, four, seven, he can end on the up diagonal of seven. Okay. Do his three sixty move. Uh, but Tzok does have to hit eight, so he has to hit all four cardinal directions. Okay. Okay, so um, the next special I want to talk about is his Poseidon Wave. Okay. So this is his Lariat. Uh, this is the A version. This is the C version. You can also break the C versions. Yeah. Um, that's one of his breaks. Uh, Tzok has two different break moves. Again, he's like one of the only characters with two break moves aside from Pine. Okay. Uh, but his breaks aren't too useful. Um, this one's mainly used as a way to build a bit of meter. Yeah. I'd say it's one of his two ways to build meter. Uh, but he kind of struggles to build meter still because this move isn't that great. It has a bunch of startup. He's susceptible to being a hit, counter hit when he does this move. Like if the opponent throws a fireball out and they hit me while I'm doing this move, yeah, I'll get counter hit. Okay. Repeatedly doing this... Repeatedly try doing this move, I'll back myself into the corner, which is something you don't want. Izok. Um, so yeah, the C version, that's its main use. Uh, uh, typically don't want to let it... Uh, the entire thing out without the break. You don't want to do that. It's pretty... telegraphed and it's also unsafe. Okay. Let's look at the uh, frame data for the two different versions yep. for a sec. Uh, the A version has 18 frames of startup, and the C version has uh, 37 frames. So they're both pretty slow. A version is minus 9 on block. C version is minus 8. Okay. So yeah, that's why you don't want to put the C version out too much. It's pretty slow, and it's pretty telegraphed version is also slow. You can use it a bit to control this uh, space in front of you. As you can see, Tzok moves forward. It helps control this space in front of you if the opponent tries to um, and jump or hop into this space okay. in front. Help control that space. Um, it's also useful as an anti-jump frame trap. Um, deter the opponent from jumping. Of course, one way to avoid his... I'd say the way to avoid his command grabs is to jump, of course. Okay. Um, so the opponent will, will, will normally try to jump a lot to avoid your command grabs, but one way to deter them from jumping is to cancel this into Poseidon Wave A from his lights. That. Okay. Uh, it leaves a four frame gap, so if they try to jump, they'll likely get hit unless they buffer uh, an instant air just defend. Okay. Yeah, you can cancel it into uh, from from his lights, an an, uh, anti-jump frame trap. One thing to know about this move is that it whiffs on king opponents. We'll yeah. we'll so that's one thing uh, you want to be careful of. Uh, but you can use it to set up uh, a 360 or a 720. We'll Yeah, it's, some, it's something you should look out for. Um, you know, the opponent can potentially punish your side and wave with like a 2B. You can also go for some like gimmicky setups into command grab. Um, yeah, this this move isn't a move you want to throw out too much in neutral because it uh, it is unsafe on block. It's minus nine. 
It's a move I see a lot of beginners like to throw out in neutral. You should try to use his normals more instead. Okay. Uh, the next special I want to talk about is his or grab, um, Icarus Crash. Oh right, I, di I didn't uh, say the input for this move, but it's just a reverse DP. So that's uh, four two one. Okay. A or C. Uh, so yeah, um, his next move, Icarus Crash, uh, is performed with a quarter circle forward. So that's two three six, and A, the air, uh. air only. Uh, you can cancel into this move from uh, a jump A or a jump B. That's from a jump A. That's from a jump B. Okay. You can go for an air to air with uh, jump A or jump B and then cancel into the move. The move does pretty decent damage. It does uh, 22 points of damage. Yeah, one way to end that move is to go for an air-to-air -air and then uh, cancel into the move. Another way is to do one that's low to the ground, and there's two different methods you can go about doing that. But the first is uh, car canceling from his 5AB, which is this move. Huh. You can cancel the startup by inputting the 236A. So that's how you do one that's close to the ground. But there's also a faster method. Um, say it's like the actual instant air version. That's by inputting a tiger knee motion and car canceling from a jump normal. So the input for it would be two, three, six, nine, and then a B plink A. Okay. Uh, you don't have to or cancel it from his jump B. You can car cancel it from uh, his jump C or jump D as well. You can do C plink A or D plink A. It looks something like this. Oh, okay, okay. So this one is faster than the 5AB car cancel, and it also moves him forward more. So this is his, again, this is his 5AB. Yeah. This is the instant air version oh okay i see so typically you want to use the instant air version it's better unless you want to delay air grab slightly with the 5ab you want to use the instant air version and one way a good way of using this move is to do it after the after uh hooking with one of your lights so for instance you can do like a b do that move. Yeah. If the opponent tries to jump forward, and they'll likely get scooped unless, of course, they buffer in air just defend. Okay. Yeah, just poke yeah. with your lights and do it. Um, the good thing about doing that is that from like this range, yeah. opponent will have a hard time reacting and punishing it. Look at how far I am. Yeah. It'll be hard for them to punish it from that range, just make sure you don't do it too much, or else the opponent might actually look for it and punish it. It is a good move to deter the opponent from trying to jump forward after your pokes. Okay. Um, yeah, so moving on, let's talk about his other command grab. Hercules throw. This move is performed using a half circle forward motion and B. So the input would be 41236B. This move is 13 frames of startup, so pretty slow. The reminder his Justice Hurricane is 3 frames of startup. And this one is 13, so it's 10 frames slower. 
which is a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's not not too useful. This is what it looks like. Okay. It does eight points of damage, but you can see I get like a, a wall bounce, and yeah. I can actually follow up with uh, a small combo. Probably talk uh, more about it once I cover his combos, but yeah. for all, uh, for now, I'll just say this move isn't uh, too useful. We typically want to just use Justice Hurricane because um, it's much faster and it generally does more damage, even including follow ups from Hercules' throw. Okay. Uh, Range of Hercules' throw is slightly more than his Justice Hurricane C, but it has less range than his Justice Hurricane A. Uh, so yeah, the, the main uh, use for this move would be as in um, anti-air guard cancel. Ah, oh, okay. So if you try to guard cancel with uh, his 360, for instance, since it has fast startup, the opponent will likely not touch the ground by then, so the uh, grab will end up whiffing. Since Hercules' throw is slow, opponent will land. If they try to go for like a, a close standing normal after their jump in, they'll likely get grabbed. However, since again, since the move is pretty slow, if they go for an immediate an immediate jump, then they can. Uh, potentially escape from the guard cancel. Okay. Uh, so we, yeah, we can probably show off the uh, guard cancel a bit later when we go yeah. into verses. Um, okay, his next special move is his active two pawn, which is performed with a DP motion in either A or C. So that's uh, six, two, three, A or C. Okay. So this is the A version, shorter range. This is the C version. And it has farther range. Um, the the A version has 28 frames of startup, and the C version has uh, 41. So they're both pretty slow. That's what it looks like when it lands. This is actually another one of his command grabs. It can't be blocked, uh, but the thing is, it it whiffs on crouching opponents. Okay. It's uh, sort of like Freeman's command grab. Yep. But it whiffs. Um, so that's one of its uh, glaring weaknesses. Uh, of. When you do this move, it actually recovers relatively quickly by the time you uh, touch the ground. So you can go, you can use it as like a, a gimmicky O or command grab setup. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty risky. You generally don't want to throw it out much. Um. Uh, you can use it to the A version. I'd say you can use it to potentially. Uh, if the opponent just has a little bit of health left, you can use it to uh, finish the round with it. You can cancel into it uh, from like two lights in the corner or a single light. But otherwise, you don't want to uh, go for it too much since it. It's pretty risky, and you're generally better off going for a 360 instead. Okay. In this sort of range, let's go for a 360. The A version has short range. The C version has more range, but there's a lot of startup, so it may be fairly telegraphed. And, um,. Yeah, you're susceptible to being counter hit while you're in the air. So again, that makes it pretty risky to throw out. More of like a, a Hail Mary type of move. Mm -hmm. If you're maybe running low on time, 
and you're trying to catch the opponent. Maybe they're in the corner. You can throw this move out. But otherwise, it's not a move you, you typically want to use too much. Okay, nice. Um, and yeah, of course, the opponent can also jump to avoid it. The way to punish this move is... Well, the ideal way you would punish this move is to jump right about when Kizaka is going to land on the ground. You can get like a full jump in combo against him. That's why you don't want to use it too much. Use it sparingly. The opponent might think you're going for like a, a like a jump in, a jump normal. So they might try to block high. That's when you can land it on them. It only works on standing opponents. Okay. So if if you use it sparingly, it can be okay, but yeah, just don't don't throw it out too much in neutral is my suggestion. His last uh, special move is his Olympus over. It's performed with a quarter circle back and either B or D. So that's two one four B or D. The D version is his other break move. Oh, okay. So the difference between these two is that uh, for his Poseidon Wave C break, it's slightly faster and it moves him farther back. This is his Olympus over. Uh, typically, if you want to use uh, his break move, just use his Poseidon Wave C since it's faster. So the D version, so this uh, Olympus over break is, uh, I, as far as I'm aware, it's pretty much useless. Okay. Um, so, hit. This is what the move looks like. Hits overhead. And the opponent can't tech roll after it either. Uh, but the thing is, this, oppo this move is very slow. So looking at the frame data, the B version has uh, 29 frames of startup, is minus 11 on block. The D version has 56 frames of startup wow. and is minus nine on block. Yeah, very slow. Um, you want an overhead, better off going for a jump or a hop. Go for this move, it's really unsafe. It's, in my opinion, it's his worst special move. You pretty much almost never want to use it. The only situation where you would maybe want to use it, I've seen a Colossus and Out use it this way. Um, and in case anyone's watching and who doesn't know who Colossus and Out are, they're like the top two Japanese Tizok players. Okay. So they seen them use it in the corner um, for chip kill. Ah, yeah. So you can see it does four points of chip damage. So if the opponent just has like a pixel of health left, and if they're like in the corner like this, you can maybe cancel into it from a light. That's like the only time you would really want to use it. Otherwise, better off just forgetting that this move exists. Okay, I see. Um, yeah, so those are all his special moves. Yeah, one thing I forgot uh, when I talked about his air grab is that it's not a true air throw. It registers as a hit, so opponent it can uh, just defend it in the air. Okay. That's So that's something important to know uh yeah but other than that that should cover all of his specials um let's, let's move on to his top attack yeah his top attack is called the Gridro super kick drop kick yeah um so let's see here has 20 frames of startup and is minus 18 on block. Wow. It's, pr it's, it's pretty unsafe on block, but if you space it 
well enough, there's a lot of pushback, so it can be a bit hard for the opponent to punish. Um, set them to block. Yeah. It does have a fair amount of pushback, uh, but it isn't something you want to throw out in neutral too much. The opponent can jump over it too, of course. This move travels up horizontally, so it doesn't really cover like the airspace too well, so the opponent can just uh, jump over you. Uh, but it is one of the more useful top attacks in the game. Um, a lot of other characters' top attacks aren't too useful, but his is more useful. Uh, its main function is as a uh, anti-fireball or anti-projectile move. Hmm. Uh, okay. You can go over some low projectiles like uh, Rock's Rapukin or Carrie's Power Wave. You'll actually go over them. You can also guard cancel into it. When, so when the opponent throws a fireball out, you just defend and guard cancel into the attack. That's one way to um, deter the opponent from throwing fireballs. So we can show that off later as well yeah. when we cover guard cancels. Um, okay, so just Super. leave supers. Yeah. So a Tzox first super is a big fall griffin, and it's performed with a 720 motion in either A or C. It's one frame of startup, and um, uh, his super has the most range of any command grab um, of his. It has more range than his 360, and it also has f a faster startup. So essentially, it's a better version of his 360. It's also uh, fully invincible on startup. And of course, it does more damage. So that's the A version. This is the C version. Nice. So the C version always ends up uh, with a side switch. Okay. That's something that might be somewhat important to know. Um, so yeah, so as for its uses, it's, as I mentioned before, it's basically a better version of his 360. So. Where you would use a 360, you could also opt for a 720. And again, I'll cover some of his commonly used uh, 360 and 720 setups a bit later in this yeah. lesson. So yeah, that's all I'll say for now about the 720. Um, the other super is Daedalus Attack, and it's performed with a double quarter circle forward motion in either B or D. That's the B version. This is the B version. So the B version has 14 frames of startup. The D version has 13 frames of startup. They're both minus 27 on block. Okay. So they're pretty unsafe. Um, thing about the D version is that you can cancel into it from a light, uh, which I'll cover as combos later. D version you can't combo into from a light, but you can combo into after uh, Hercules throw. That's another combo I'll show off later. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'd say both of his supers are useful. Some characters like m might only have an useful super, but some of his supers are useful. His B super isn't too useful though. It's hard to combo into. Julie's throw isn't that great. Uh, so you'll probably mainly find yourself only comboing into his D super. Daedalus attack D. 
Actually, I can show I can show you the combo, like the basic combo right now. Jab the B super. Okay. And yeah, I'll talk about uh, variations of comboing into that later. Uh, so yeah, let's let's talk about combos next then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, so yeah, uh, for its combos, Tzok doesn't have many. Yeah. Uh, people like to kind of make fun of him and say that he doesn't have any combos, which <laughs> is somewhat true. I'd say he has like two main combos with uh, variations. First one being jab into D super. The other one would be Hercules throw into uh, his follow-ups. Okay. So the main most useful combo that I would recommend like a uh, player to learn is comboing um, his jab into the super. So the way you want to do that is uh, you want to input you want to store store the first quarter circle forward motion since Skyro has a large uh, buffer window uh, by doing 236A or you can do 236A and D okay. and then you do another 236D basically 236A, 236D or if you want to be safe uh, you can do 236AD 236D uh, AD is so you don't accidentally get a special move yep. it's the simultaneous uh, button press technique, the game. And if you're unfamiliar with that, if you press um, two buttons, like D, for instance, um, don't get this, and you do a special move input. The special move won't come out. Instead, you'll just get the normal. In this case, uh, A takes priority over over the D, so you'll just get like a two. Uh, like a 360 and AD, you will only get like a jab, for instance. Okay. So yeah, that technique is thing that you should have to do well as Tzok a uh, combo into his a uh, D super. It's uh, it also works well as a punish uh, since his jab comes out in four frames, so it's essentially a four frame punish. So for Beginners, I would definitely recommend, like, this is the combo you should know. If there's one combo you should know with this character, it's jab into D super. Okay, nice. Basically, he has different ways of setting it up. You can hit confirm into it uh, from a jump C or a jump D. Oh. You have enough time to hit confirm. What you want to do is do jump C and then buffer the first quarter circle forward when you do the jab. So if you see the jab hit, you just have to do another quarter circle forward and press D. Uh, it also works with uh, jump B. Also combo into this uh, from a, a meaty, meaty close D. So uh, normally if, if you try to do close D and 5A, it won't link, it won't combo. But if you do a meaty close D, you can act, uh, you get a bit more frame advantage uh, from the meaty and you can actually link a 5A. And by doing that, you can combo into the super. Oh. And that didn't combo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me try again. Okay. Got the link there. That's the combo. Nice. Uh, Again, you want to hit confirm into it in case the opponent blocks. Yeah. 
Uh, so you can do that in the corner. Typically, you would set it up after a D throw because, again, the opponent can't tech roll after the throw, so you have plenty of time to set it up. Another way you can set up the meaty is after an air to air. That's in combo again. Yeah, yeah, okay. But the idea is um, go for the meaty on the opponent's landing. Yeah. Could be pretty. You have to be a bit close. Try to get this combo. Oh. So yeah, they're in length. Yeah. I can't get this combo. Try a couple more times. Yeah. There you go. I was able to get it there. Nice. Uh, so it is a bit hard to set up since you have to be pretty close for the meaty. But it is an option that you can keep in mind. Um, yeah, so those are his combos that involve a uh, jab into V Super. And, and you can use either 5A or 2A, it doesn't matter. They both have the same startup. Okay. So, which, whichever one you prefer, uh, prefer really. Um, his other combos involve Hercules Throw. He has, I would say, three main follow ups. First is Poseidon Wave. Poseidon Wave A. It's one follow up. You can also combo into his top attack, but it does less damage than Poseidon Wave A. And they both give you corner carry, so uh, there isn't really a reason to use top attack over Poseidon Wave A. Okay. Uh, the, ne the next one is his. Uh, air throw, Icarus Crash. This one's a bit harder to land uh, mid screen. I'll try a few times, but I haven't really practiced this combo too much. Yeah. That's it right there. Okay. Um, does more damage than Poseidon Wave, but it's harder. Um, in the corner, you can go for the instant air version, so it's easier. Oh, yeah. So, um, if you keep in mind the damage, uh, Hercules Throw does 8 points of damage, uh, and the Icarus Crash does 22 points, so that's around uh, 30 points in total. Poseidon Wave, on the other hand, Nineteen points, so that's uh, twenty-seven points of damage. Yeah. So, let's do less damage than a Justice Hurricane C. Justice Hurricane C does be two points. That's why I said a Hercules throw isn't that useful. Better off using Justice Hurricane C. Or just as Hurricane A. Um, and his other follow up is uh, into B Super. Mm. And that does. Uh, B Super does 27 points of damage, so that does uh, 35 points of damage in total. Okay. It was only three points more than just as Hurricane C. And that costs uh, one bar, so you can see how it's not really. Worth it, and how Hercules throw isn't that great. Mm -mm -mm. So possible for this. 
It's also possible for this move to whiff and time it well. If you don't get all three hits. See how the last uh, hit whiff there? Yeah. So the opponent can actually punish you. Um, so it is a bit risky to go for the follow-up. I think it also depends on how close you are to the wall for the wall bounce. It might change your timing up a bit, so... Oh, okay. Uh, the super is a bit risky as a follow-up. So I generally w wouldn't recommend going for it unless you, like, really nail the, this combo down. Generally recommend just going for the Poseidon wave because you get instant corner carry. Can, can basically throw the opponent into the corner. Okay. I'm in wave That's the easiest follow up by far. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, so I think those pretty much cover his uh, combos. Yeah. Um, some counter hit combos, but I don't think I'll I'll cover them here. It's a combo video on the YouTube channel that uh, Sombrail made. So yeah. if you want to look up more combos, you can just watch that video. Okay. Yeah, the main combo you want to learn is jab into D super. I'd say that's pretty important. Okay. Um. So yeah. Uh, do you want to head into versus mode now? We can. Yeah, sure. Show off some stuff. Yeah, yeah, we can try something. Okay. Uh, who do you want me to to pick? Uh, Tizok or no, um, okay. actually, uh, oh, uh, Terry. Actually, some like he has a fireball, and I want to throw off some stuff. Okay. X handicap. Uh, okay, so let's show off some of his card cancels oh. first. Uh, the first one I want to show off, since I'm already like in top mode, is his uh, top attack. Yeah. So if you can like just do like two jabs and then do a fireball, fireball C, two jabs, fireball C, and then I'll try to guard cancel against that. Wait just a second because the music is way too loud. Let's try like this. Okay, so um, what what did you ask me? Uh, just do like two jabs and then fireball. The jabs are just so I know when it's coming. Uh, so uh, the fireball. I see okay. fireball. Okay. Okay. Again. Okay. Just one more time. Yeah, you can see how that guard cancel can function. Yeah. Against fireballs. Um. Or just, yeah, just throw his fireball from this range. Oh. Oh, nice. And also just go over fireballs, uh, grounded fireballs like parries. Yeah. Okay, so that's enough of that. Um, the next cancel I want to show off is his Hercules throw. Yeah. If, again, you can just do two jabs and then go for a forward jump. Forward mm. jump D. Jump D? This one? D, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. That's his guard cancel Hercules. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it can function as in the anti air. Yeah. Um, and then his 360. Uh, 
So what I want you to do is try a throwing me in the corner and then try to do a meaty to be. Meaty with uh, a throw. Me. To be, crouch to me. Oh, okay. To be, okay. Throw me and then try going for Oh, wait. Okay. That's his guard cancel 360. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can guard cancel either high or low. Uh, some moves in this game can, some standing normals can only be guard uh, just defended high. Okay. Of course, uh, lows have to be just defended low. So, this guard cancel 360 is be good if you can land it. It's just a bit difficult to land. A lot of the time, it might be like just a read. Okay. So when you think the opponent is going for like a, a move you can or cancel against, uh, you would go for it. Okay. Uh, you can try to confirm it off of multiple just defense. So what I want you to do is uh, near the corner, um, yeah, from like around that range, I want you to do, like, again, two jabs and then go for a jump jump uh, E and then close C. So jump D and close and close uh, C. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> close. So two jabs. Wait, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then can maybe just cancel into fireball. Oh, okay. So okay. Try one more time. Oops. Oh. Make sure you're close for that close C. Ah, Excellent fireball. Or late. Wait. <laughs> and make sure you do it fast. But you mean so you, can... you mean like canceling with this? Not not faint cancel, just normal cancel. After the close C, just do two, three, six C. Okay. Mm. Wait. No. <laughs> okay. Two. Um, okay. Well, let's wait. Wait. Again. Wanna try again or? I get... Wait, just a moment. Oh, okay. Just, uh, just like that. This okay. Okay, what? okay, now I'll try to go for the guard cancel. Okay, so whenever you're ready. Uh, okay. Two jabs first. Yeah. <laughs> there okay. I was able to guard cancel to the 360 off of like uh, two JDs. Yeah. So by doing multiple just defense, you can sort of uh, confirm into a guard cancel in a way. So if you're good at doing that, then uh, 360 uh, guard cancel guard cancel oh. 360 becomes pretty good. Let me try and again. The... Oh. Wait. And so slow. The guard, uh, yeah. Justice Hurricane comes out in uh, three frames, so it's a fast guard cancel. Yeah. So it makes it good in that way, but then it only works on grounded opponents, not on oppo uh, born opponents. So if they're jumping, it won't work, of course, the grab will whiff. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, Poseidon Wave, the cancel Poseidon Wave is okay. The only issue is that it's kind of slow. Again, the startup is fairly slow. Like the A version has, uh, let's see here, 18 frames of startup. So you can use it as a guard cancel against certain moves, but 
just something to keep in mind is that instead of slow startup, the opponent can potentially uh, block or you know maybe do another move and yeah. hit you out of the cancel. Okay. So I think I just wanted to touch upon his guard cancels. Guard cancels that pretty much uh, covers most of the useful ones, anyways. Okay. Uh. So the next thing I want to talk about are his dash and faint. Yeah. So his ox four dash looks like this. Yeah. Um, he's the only character who can't cancel his forward dash. All other characters can uh, cancel their forward dash mid animation, but he can't. Okay. Uh, his forward dash is 17 frames in total and has a unique property in that it's airborne mid animation. So it can avoid lows. Yeah. Ah, okay. What I want you to do is just to be periodically, like with mash it, but just like press it like that. <laughs> Sorry. To do it a bit slower. Yeah. Doing it. See how it whiffs. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is it. one of the ways you can go uh, set up a command grab is dash 360. It can go over lows. Okay. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And his feints. So he has two feints. Okay. Forward feint, which is done with AC. And a down feint, which is done with two AC. Okay. Down faint is pretty much useless. The only use it has is as a taunt. It's a cool taunt. Okay. That's about it. Um, the useful one is his forward faint because uh, one, well, it's faster than his down faint and it moves him forward slightly, as you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the most important property is that it has upper body invincibility. Uh, very similar to his 2AB. Actually mimics his 2AB. So if you see here, it looks like his 2AB. Start up of it. So he's able to go through a lot of different moves using his forward feints. Okay. Uh, including uh, jump moves. So he can use it to anti-air against uh, jump ins and jump normals. Okay. Oh, the. F um, the first way I want to show this move off is as an anti-air. So what I want you to do is again two jabs and then forward jump D. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry, one more time. Oh, nice. That's how you anti-air with it. Okay. Not, it's not just as an anti-air, but it can be used against normals on the ground as well. So, um, what I want you to do is, at this time, I'm going to stand close to you, and I want you to do two 5As. I'm, I'm going to block them. I want you to cancel the second 5A into his power charge C. So that's 6-6-C. Six, six, Let's see if you can... Uh, so it's like uh, this and... 5As. Two 5As, and then the this one. Jabs, yeah. Two jabs and then power okay. charge C, so that's six six C. Ah, uh, five A. Five oh sorry, sorry. Yeah. So it's a bump and then okay. cancel into six six C. Oops, wait. Nope. <laughs> ah uh, I think you're doing his A version. Five A six A six six C. 6, 6A. 6A. Ah, okay, okay, okay. This one. Like that. Okay. okay. Okay, so one Okay, one more time. This time I'm going to faint cancel. Oh, wait. This time? Two. Ah, yeah, you try the faint cancel. I see. Oh, thank you, Neme. Thank you. I never used the... Uh, oh, as you can see there, I faint cancel through your power charge C. Yeah. 
So, again, it can go through a lot of different moves. Uh, one thing you want to learn as, as T-Zoc is what moves you can move through. Yeah. Practice your timings. So his forward feint is a very important tool that he has, a very useful one. So if you want to main this character, you definitely want to become proficient at using his forward feint because it's it's super important. Okay. Um, and yeah, typically his forward feint is uh, 13 frames of startup. And typically you want to follow up with either his uh, 360, so Justice Hurricane or his D throw. And if you can manage, then you can also do a 720, but that's a bit harder to do. Either Ford Faint 360, Ford Faint D throw. Okay. So your main follow-ups. Um, uh, let's cover the throw bug. Yeah. Uh, so do you, do you know about it? Nope. It's uh, something we, down AB, maybe? No, I don't know. No. So basically, mate, you can cause uh, Tzox, well, any command grabs in the game and any throws in the game to whiff. Okay. If you're in top mode and if you input a top attack that's CD, uh, yeah. input CD during the recovery of one of your moves, or if you input uh, super, you have to have uh, super meter, to have meter available though. Yeah. Uh, you can cause a, a throw or grab to whiff. So what I want you to do is I want you to do a knuckle A, and then I want you to ash CD. So knuckle uh, uh, B, uh, sorry. Knuckle A. A, okay. I tried doing that. And then the top move. Oops, sorry. I'm going to try to punish with 360, and I want you to do mash the top attack move. Okay. Do burn up way. Oh, you see how the move yeah. with? Yeah, now that, that I, this you time... explained uh, uh, to me, uh, Kota, Kota explained it uh, with Dong and um, who else? Freeman. Yeah, the, the top attack is uh, invincible. But just when you are in, uh, in top or even when you are not in top? But the top attack is only when you're in top mode. Okay. Can also input super, but that's of course a bit harder to do on reaction because you'd have to like maybe input a double quarter circle forward motion. Yeah. You have to have meter. So usually top attack is the one you should watch out for as Tzok. Yeah. Um, throw bug is something you should be aware of if you play this character because it hurts your punish game. Typically Tzok's like fastest most damaging punish is either his uh, 360 or 720. Yeah. If the opponent is in top mode and they know how to do the throw bug, if you've seen them do it to you, it ganks you, then that's something you should look out for. Okay. Although not everyone even knows about it. And online, I actually don't encounter too many players who actually do it, so. Okay. Something you should be aware of, though. I actually want to show off. Uh, you can you can make it with without having the top attack come out. So if you just input CD, like maybe press it twice, but don't mash it yeah. near the end of your recovery of your burn knuckle A. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Okay, we can, we can try. Burn knuckle A. Wait, I was late. Let's try again do it at the very end of your recovery when you think I'm going to go for the 360 and then yeah, the 360 should whiff but your top attack won't come out. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. That time your top attack. Okay, almost. So yeah, it actually whiffed there and you went for a close C. So uh, yeah, your opponent can actually just make it whiff and yeah. then punish you. Okay. And... Yeah, that covers the throw bug. So nice. It's gonna go into training mode and just talk about a few more topics and then I guess wrap up. Yeah.
so the next thing I'm going to talk about is some commonly used command grab setups. Yeah. That's uh, with 360 and 720. Um, so I've come up with, or yeah, I've come up with uh, six different commonly used setups, uh, yeah. three of which are fairly easy. And then the other three are a harder, like more intermediate level. Yeah. Uh, so the first first one, it, probably the most common one you see beginners use is empty jump 360. Okay. Really easy to do since you can buffer your 360 while you're in the air. Do it right as you land. Yeah. So that's fairly straightforward. You can actually, you know, avoid fireballs that way as well. And if you mix it in with some of your jump normals, the opponent might try to, you know, block. So that's when you can go for a 360. Okay. The next one is pick throw 360. And you typically do this after something like a, a jab. Okay. You just buffer the 360 in your jab. Uh, it doesn't have to be a jab. You can do like a C or a close D, for instance. Okay. So when you're like looking and pressuring the opponent with your normals, you can mix this in. That's pretty easy to do as well. Then his... Uh, other easy one to do is dash 360. Yeah. So the way you want to input this, or the way I do it at least, is to do 6-6. Uh, six, six. So that's a dash, and then you can complete the 360 from there. So you do 6-6 six, six, and then 3 2 one, four, seven, eight. Okay. But you can also go... I'm doing it uh, here clockwise uh, as player one. You can also go counterclockwise. It's just based on preference. Okay. And do it in either direction it doesn't matter and again uh dash is a good way to close distance and also as we just showed it can go over lows okay so it can be a good way to get in and for three more uh, intermediate or uh, intermediate or harder setups to to do um uh, would be his uh, one would be his forward feint 360. Okay. Uh, this is done with I do six AC and then three two one four seven eight. But again, you can go the other direction if you want. Okay. We just showed off how forward feint can go through various moves. This is an uh, important uh, setup as well. You no. Know, also moves him forward slightly, not as much as his forward dash. It does move him forward slightly, so it's you know good to use to get in range as well. Okay. The next one is similar to his forward feint, uh, but this time you want to feint cancel. Kizok can uh, cancel. It's, um. 5A is 2A is 5B and also is 5C on block. Quickly show that. So you can faint cancel to his uh, command grab. So it looks something like this. That's one way to get in close. If you're from like this range. I see. And feint cancel to get in close. Um, then his last one, this one is a bit more uh, advanced, I'd say. Uh, this one is set up that Colossus likes to use. It's a uh, hop A360, and it's an option select. The idea here is when I go for the hop A, yeah. do the hop A at the top of his jump. 
whiffs, but the apex of his jump, you can see how it whiffs okay. against a standing opponent. Whiffs. Uh, what you want to do is do hop A, and you want to input the 360 motion. And just as he lands, you want to uh, complete the motion and press A, either A or C, so the command grab comes out. Okay. The way it works as a option select is if the opponent blocks on the ground, the hop A will whiff, 360 will come out. If they try to jump, the hop A will hit them. There'll be a slight bit of hit stop so that your by the time you touch the ground, your 360 won't come out. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to practice the timing of this on whiff. Make sure you practice the timing the 360 just as you touch the ground. If the opponent jumps. Uh, you, you can't see my inputs here, but I'm inputting a 360 motion. Okay. Um, with the timing on width. But, but yeah, basically, do if you time it right, the 360 won't come out uh, due to the slight hit stop from hitting the opponent. That's a good select to use. Okay. Um, I didn't mention this before, uh, but I only partially talked about it, but the way Tzok wants to build meter, mm -hmm. he wants to either again break his Poseidon Wave C or with his instant air grab. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, f I kind of forgot to mention, mention the putting the air grab to build meter, but those are his two m primary methods of building meter. Okay. They're not, uh, they're not the best. It's still a bit slow. But, you know, that's the best he's got. Okay, so you can whip those two moves in neutral to build a bit of meter, and. Okay, let's cover some o common Okazemi setups or setups for Okazemi. Yeah. Uh, the I, I'd say the first one you should know that's imp like common setup for Okazemi is through uh, Augustus Hurricane A. Um, as we discussed before, the A version leaves you closer to the opponent than the C version. Yeah. So it's better for Okazemi. Mid screen, go for dash 360. Okay. Um, if you want to go for the Justice Hurricane C, sometimes it might whiff. There it whiff. What you want to do is you want to, when you input the dash, make sure you don't. Uh, hit six six too fast when doing the dash. You want to hit six and then delay the second six just a tiny bit so you get a sort of uh, micro walk. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, uh, okay. You can land the Justice Hurricane C. Yeah. But yeah, that's hey, one hey. of his um, Okazemi setups mid screen. You can also go for just go for uh, dash and block. Recover. You recover fast enough so the opponent can't like try to wake up and punish your dash. You can go hey. for dash and sorry, dash hey, hey. and uh, air to air jump C. Go yeah. jump C. If they try to jump, okay. You think they're going to go for a dash grab? I try to jump so you can dash and then go for an air to air jump C. Oh, okay. Um, ba -ba. That's mid screen in the corner. And also go for Okazemi after the Justice Hurricane A. Simon actually leaves you closer to the opponent. Uh, like at the perfect range for a forward faint 360. Okay. Uh, you can also go for a uh, medium close, medium close C, or a 
sorry, a, a meaty 5C. Okay. So you try to jump. Try to jump your command grab. You can meaty 5C. If they block, you can go for like a forward feint 360. If they try to wake up with something, maybe like a invincible reversal, like Terry's uh, power dunk break, you can just delay your 5C or your forward feint. Just have to delay it slightly. Um, yeah, you can also go for most of his lights also reach. So go for a hop or a jump in. So he can do a lot of stuff after that. Then his last, I'd say his last uh, that I wanted to talk about is D throw near the corner. No. So after a D throw, you can go for a Poseidon wave A to get in close. Yeah. It's typically how you set it up. He has various options. After that, you can go for a close D, meaty, and with the combo that I showed earlier. Yeah. The 5 AD super, you can go for a 360 or 720, just like that. Um, you can go for a hop or jump. It's a quick overhead. You can go for a back hop B. He has a lot of different options uh, after after the D throw in the corner as well. Nice. Okay. Um, so that covers like his common Kazemi setups. Um, one other thing I want to talk about is to deter the opponent from jumping when going for like a command grab. Yeah. Uh, especially his. Uh, is, uh, you cancel command grab. As I mentioned before, you can cancel a light and put Poseidon wave A as a jump frame trap. So that can be a bit risky since it's a minus on block. It's unsafe. Another way, a safer option would be to just for another 5A. Try to jump after your first 5A. You should hit them out of your jump. You can also go for a uh, air to air forward jump C. So if they try to jump immediately after your 5A. Okay. Uh, you can air to air them. Also beats uh, instant air just defend attempts since the, the jump C will be delayed enough in the air. It'll beat their instant air dust defense. And let's see, it's the last topic I want to talk about. Are some some 720 buffering techniques. Yeah, this is a bit more uh, intermediate to advanced. So the first one I want to talk about is is uh, kick throw 720. So to do this, an easy way to do this is to use the simultaneous button press technique, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. D. And what you can do is you can use it to store a 360. So I do 360 AD. If I do 360 without the AD, then I'll just get this hurricane, right? Okay. But if I press AD, then I'll only get jab. Oh, so if I do 360 AD and then another 360 and then either A or C, then I can easily buffer into uh, a 720. So it looks something like this. Oh, okay. That's an easy uh, 720 off of a tick throw. Yeah. Oh, nice. Off of a jab. Then the second technique 
uh, I want to talk about is more advanced. It's called, I like to call it the partial buffer technique. It's, it's something that Out originally shared on the Discord and I, I learned it from him and I've labbed it a bit. So I've adapted it for various uh, setups. The idea is you can buffer part of your 720 uh, before a feint or a dash, and then you can buffer the other part of it uh, in the dash or the feint. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is for use with uh, feint or dash. So f one example would be to do one, two. Yeah. Five. Five is neutral, so you do four, one, two, five. And if I wanted to do a dash, I do six, six, nine, eight, seven, four, one, two, three, six, nine, eight. So basically, I just buffer part of the 720 before the dash. When yeah. I do four, one, two, five, six, six, that actually counts as a half circle forward motion. Yeah. You don't have to hit the three because, as I mentioned before, you don't need diagonals for your 60 and 720 motions. Okay. So when I do four, one, two, five, six, six, that counts as a half circle forward. So I've already buffered a half circle forward for my 720. I just yeah. have to complete the rest of the 720 um, to, to do it. Okay. okay. Let me let me do this from the player two side. That's what it looks like. Ah, oh, nice. Uh, you can also do this with feint. You just have to substitute the six six with six AC. Oh wow! Okay. Um. Yeah, and you can also. If you buffer, if you start the buffer from like uh, something else, like maybe a normal, you can start with eight, seven, four, one, two. Okay. So if I like start from a jab, if I start the buffer from a jab, I can do instance eight, seven, four, one, two, five, six, six, or six AC. And that counts as a full 360 buffer. And I just have to complete another 360 to complete the 720. Ah, okay. Interesting. The key here is to make sure you do, you do a clean input when going to the neutral position. Yeah. Going from the neutral position. Um, that's so you can carry the buffer over. Uh, this game, of course, has a pretty large buffer window. And I'm showing uh, some of some of the ways you can utilize the technique. Of course, you can just do the 720 straight up if you're more comfortable uh, with it that way. If you tire 720 in the dash or the faint alone, you can do that. Or you can use this technique if you find it easier. Um, you don't have to do it off of like a, a normal. You can buffer it from anything really, like a jump. Or dash. Okay. So it's a pretty versatile technique, but I'd say it, it is a bit more advanced. Uh, so yeah, that, I think that basically covers everything I wanted to talk about. Nice, nice. Okay. <clears throat> so we we finished for, for today's dojo. I don't have enough time for uh, for the first five, but it's fine. I, I suck, terribly suck with the so I, I already know it. <laughs> I never <laughs> use I never used gra grapplers in my life, so you, you already saw me uh, struggling with uh, <laughs> with Terry for uh, for a fireball. So, but yeah, anyway, it was very interesting because uh, knowing a, a character, it's um, it's the good way to counter the that character. So uh, it's always good to to know how a character works. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay, so if anyone from the from the views uh, have, uh, has any any questions, now it's the right time, or we can just close the light here, and uh, we'll see again next week. Uh, for this time would be Janet, so I, I probably caught I will be with us again if he has uh, time and uh, if he is available. So yeah, next time Janet. And I don't see any questions for now. Okay, so Giga, uh, thank you for uh, uh, helping us with the dojo and for showing us everything tonight. And yeah, no problem. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, since we are here and uh, since we, we reached the, the top uh, of the views, uh, let's just remember, do you want to shout out the um, uh, Peachy, Peachy Twitch channel? Uh, usually you do the um, uh, casuals, uh, North American casuals on uh, Sundays, right? Uh, yeah, right. So uh, Giancarlo and myself uh, host uh casuals for uh north america every sunday at uh, 7 p.m eastern uh, 4 p.m uh, pacific so if you know anyone's watching this uh who's in the garo discord if if you're watching this on like twitch or youtube and you're not in the, the garo discord and want to learn more about the game then i highly uh, suggest joining the discord we do host uh weeklies for the game uh, every Sunday. Uh, yeah. They're just casuals, so yeah, it's just for people who want to join and have fun and play against others. Yeah, that's it. And uh, it, it is nice because uh, it varies depending on the entrance, so the uh, the casuals are not the same every, every, every week. So sometimes you play around Robin, sometimes you play some other kinds of uh, like tournaments uh, but it's uh, it's a nice moment for for the community and it's a nice moment if you are new or intermediate to to play with other people we try to change up the format uh, every week to keep it fresh and fun yeah that's really really nice uh, okay okay so that being said guys i Wish you a good day, a good night, and uh, we'll see you again next week, okay? Da! Da! <laughs> okay, <laughs> Tizak says da. Thank you again, G uh, Giga. That's my pleasure. Okay, guys, bye-bye, good night. Have a good one. Hey, everyone.